welcoming story. We're pleased to be joined by the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Holstra. Pete's now a Shillman Senior Fellow for the Investigative Project on Terrorism and author of the book, Architects of Disaster, The Destruction of Libya. Pete joins us from Newsmax, Washington. Joining us via Skype, former CIA analyst Fred Flights. Fred's now the vice president of the Center for Security Policy. So, gentlemen, here's this former Homeland Security employee, Philip Haney, saying if the White House had not shut down his investigation in 2012, it appears he could have had a hand in preventing last week's terror attack in San Bernardino. In all sincerity, Pete, do you think this attack could have been prevented? Well, you never know about a specific event or a specific terrorist attack, but what you, we do know is that this has been a pattern of this administration that the tools that were painstakingly put together during the Bush administration have consistently been rolled back by the Obama administration. And you need to remember where this investigation started. This was because, you know, the intelligence community, they were looking at this head mosque in Pakistan, I believe, and also looking at the school where Malik went to school, the Al Huda, and identified both the school and this parent mosque as being associated with radical jihadists, and then taking a look at where those tentacles went to. They went to a school in Mississauga in uh, Canada. They went to this mosque in San Bernardino. And so what our intelligence and homeland security folks do is what we ask them to do, they start putting together the dots and saying, whom, radical mosque, radical school, radical school in Mississauga, Canada, uh, this mosque in San Bernardino, uh, affiliated with this radical mosque. Man, we ought to be looking at these folks to see the relationship. And Obama, it appears that the Obama administration puts a halt on it. Could the attack, this specific attack have been identified and stopped? Who knows? But if you're not doing the work, you don't even have a chance to stop it. And Fred, according to Philip Haney, this investigation was shut down because the White House was concerned about profiling. But Fred, when you stop and think about it, isn't just about every, uh, every law enforcement, every intelligence technique dependent on profiling, at least trying to narrow down and, as Pete said, connect the dots? And I guess... In addition to the whole notion of profiling, is there a distinction between necessary evaluation and, quote, bad profiling? No, I, I think you hit the nail right on the head. This is part of a pattern we've seen. Fort Hood wasn't terrorism. The shooting in Chattanooga wasn't terrorism. We had over 70 Defense Department intelligence officials and uh, intelligence analysts who had their analysis changed to favor the White House's position that we are winning against ISIS. This is a president who has no strategy to fight ISIS and the radical jihad movement and refuses to acknowledge that it is a global campaign, a global ideological threat. I think Mr. Haney has provided the most compelling evidence of this. Well, it is worth noting that yesterday in a White House briefing, the presidential press secretary used the term gun violence to deal with this terror attack, so yet more language of denial from the Obama administration. But Pete, the Department of Homeland Security insists there are holes in Haney's story. Nevertheless, the program he was a part of was shut down in 2012. That's the year investigators say that Syed Farouk was planning an attack, but held off because of arrests made in the area. So it would appear to me that they were already making arrests and yet the program was shut down, what, in the name of political correctness? Well, you know, obviously uh, when I was chairman of the Intel Committee, we got, we depended on whistleblowers and I wrote an op-ed on this a couple of weeks ago. The thing is, especially in this kind of administration where you've got them stonewalling investigations to Congress, Congress needs to extend and expand the protections that are in place for whistleblowers. Obviously, if the Department of Homeland Security says there's holes in this, the intelligence committees, uh, the Homeland Security committees, they're going to go and hopefully do a very, very thorough investigation of the claims that this individual is bringing forward, uh, and then they're going to talk and explain to the American people exactly what happened. But the reason, you know, I'm somewhat sympathetic to this 
you know, this specific claim by this whistleblower because it fits the pattern of everything else that we know this administration. It's not like, well, you know, they've been really, really aggressive over here, and this guy's saying they pulled back here. No, they pulled back everywhere. Uh, so this, it's consistent with the pattern of this administration. Now, of course, Pete, you chaired the Intelligence Committee. Fred Flights, you served as a, a very valuable staffer in helping out on Capitol Hill in days past, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if you gents happened to see Ron Johnson's, uh, well, they called it a roundtable, but it was a hearing um, uh, earlier this week on the Senate side in Homeland Security. But here came an assistant undersecretary for visas from the State Department. And this guy is telling the assembled senators, uh, telling Ron Johnson and his committee that, oh, uh, they're, they're, all the boxes were checked off. We did the proper interview uh, and said, well, we did what we needed to do. But, but here's the clincher. I never heard the guy say, I guess some of the senators said, that Tashfeen Malik lied on her application. So is there any way, is there any way, Fred, to uh, ensure proper screening in association with these fiancé visas or really any type of visa? I, I think there's, there's definitely steps that we can take, and, and the fiancé visa seems to be a loophole uh, that uh, obviously the San Bernardino shooters used to get in. But I want to comment on something that uh, Congressman Hoekstra said. There's a real problem with intelligence whistleblowers. We have to have the intelligence committees as safe harbors for, for legitimate whistleblowers like Haney and traitors like Edward Snowden so they can bring their concerns to Congress quickly and without violating their, their security oath and national security. And so this is an opportunity missed. It, it sounds, to follow with what Fred's telling us, Pete, uh, we don't know if Philip Haney went to one of those committees, but by going on television, is, is that risky to blow the whistle publicly, Pete? Uh, I don't think he's in any legal jeopardy at this point. He's now retired, so he's not facing any professional, uh, excuse me, professional threats or anything like that. If he had been doing this while he was still employed, he'd be at great risk, both professionally. Uh, and maybe somewhat legally, this is why you have to expand this whistleblower protection, uh, you know, the law to protect individuals like this and provide them with an escape valve when they see, you know, their agency doing the wrong things. Typically right now, J.D., in the, uh, in the intelligence community, you have to go to your supervisor and say, is it okay for me to go to Congress and expose what's going on here? And if, you know, and you know what a supervisor is going to say, I'm, I think that's really a bad idea. Don't worry, we'll handle it here. Uh, so you need to expand these. In terms of the immigration program, J.D., this system was broken when you and I were in Congress. It's now under extreme pressure and stress with all of these refugees and with ISIS and other groups saying they're going to target coming into the United States. It's time to put this stuff on hold and do a total reevaluation of this. It's garbage into the system. If you're getting bad information coming in, what you're going to do is you're going to get bureaucrats making bad decisions. They're going to check all the right boxes. They did their work, uh, but they will not have done it very well. And Pete, with about 45 seconds remaining, I want to stick with you since we both paid some attention to polls appearing on the ballot every two years during our days in the House. A new New York Times poll says the American people are most worried about a terror attack here at home in the greatest numbers they've seen since back on 9-11. Bottom line on this, Pete, is this administration, is our collective effort enough to protect our homeland from another San Bernardino attack, much less another 9-11? Uh, absolutely not. When you get the Attorney General saying her biggest concern is uh, Islamophobia, we're in big trouble. Uh, but the scary thing is this administration, they have put their strategy in place. They have their strategy in place. It's going to stay in place for the next 14 months. Uh, the next president is going to be handed uh, an America that is less secure than when this president came into office. We are all at greater risk today than we were seven years ago. I believe the expression through the years is whistling past the graveyard. I don't know if we'll get past it. Yeah. Pete Holstra, Fred Flights, we thank you again. Pete is the author of Architects of Disaster, The Destruction of Libya. You heard what those two gentlemen had to say. Do you agree or disagree? Send me your comments at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments, and we're back with more.